And now, here's the breakdown with Justin Hunt. Justin. Jude, what's going on, sir? Chilling, bro. It's good to have you back. Uh, I was on vacation. How was that? Did mushrooms in the wilderness. Uh, that was fucking awesome. Yeah. And yeah. We, we, yeah, I went with the homies. We ain't done it in like five years, and we're all old as shit now. We're all like 40 doing mushrooms in the wilderness. It just gets weirder and weirder. Well, it's harder to walk up hills. You know, motherfuckers <laughs> got old, bro. Like, we got old and fat, man. Like, right. just, it, yeah. I'm glad you guys made it back safely then. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, I look. Treacherous. Shroom, yeah. Shrooms are dope, man. I'm a big fan of shrooms. Yeah, shrooms are. say that. Psychedelics. I right. feel like everybody should do some psychedelics in their lifetime. And they're healthy. They grow out of the ground. Yeah. You know, they're not all super manufactured in the lab. Yeah, you're poison. It's poison, but like it's it's poison with a nice body buzz and you see <laughs> cool shit. So like, is it right. really poison? <laughs> is it poison if it gives you a body buzz? Right, I right. I don't think so. No, these are real questions. I don't have the answers to these you questions. You ever fuck on poison? That shit is awesome. <laughs> That's I a turn great into a tree. Yeah, I'd wear that T-shirt. I was a tree. I was like, inner <laughs> turn into a tree person. Did you listen to the uh, Jay Z album while you were? Uh, you hit me up. You said you said we're going to break down the Jay Z album. Talk about it. Yeah, we had a lot of requests. As uh, people know, we we share these conversations. Yeah. on YouTube, everyone wants to know what Jude thinks about Jay Z's four forty four. Because I'm the notorious. I'm a notorious hating ass motherfucker. Allegedly, I am. No, I really am. I've, I've like, I'm like, yeah, I heard that song. Well, you like Forty and Scarface. I do like Forty and Scarface. Do you like Four Forty Four? And I like Outkast, and I like Jay Z. I haven't look, man. I'm gonna be real with you. I got a bit bored. I I was bored by Jay Z's last projects. I I I downloaded Magna Carta. I really wasn't my taste. He's always do like spit. He can always spit, but sometimes the stuff he's talking about, I'm not interested in. And other times, sonically, it just it's not for me. Uh, but I was a huge fan of Jay Z early shit. I, you were too, I'm guessing, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I especially I, like I, Volume Two was probably my first one that I had on repeat. Yeah, Blueprints, my first. Oh, this dude is incredible. Project reaction I had from Jay Z. I ended up going back and falling in love with Reasonable Doubt in a different kind of way later on. Yeah, I think the Black Album is probably one of the most balanced albums of that decade i thought it was an emotional album from jay-z at that time i thought it was a great sayonara for someone who was supposedly Leaving. retiring at that point in time i thought yeah. american gangsta is one of the best excuses ever to go back to the trap to be 40 something years old rapping about selling drugs again they tied it to the movie with yeah. denzel washington I, I thought those projects were the ones that stand out to me the most when I think of Hope. He could rap, but I tend to fall where you are most of the time with most projects. Like uh, Magna Carta, well, I didn't, I couldn't get down with Magna Carta. I bought it. Like I, It's on my fucking phone, and when this shit comes up, I skip it. It sounds like art collection raps. What does that mean? What do you mean by that? I just feel like he's rapping. Like He would say stuff that was like... Oh, hmm. rapping about what he had and yeah, shit. Or, or non sequiturs, like, I don't pop Molly, I rock Tom Ford. Like I'm pretty sure people pop Molly while wearing Tom Ford. You can do both. It just sounds like a disconnect. He would say stuff like twerk Miley, and I guess it was a joke or an illusion or a metaphor on the, on the project. It sounded really? It just sounded like dusty. It's the first time I ever sounded like a guy who's like the old guy in the club trying to like relate. That's kind of what I felt like. And you know what? I don't like that new sound anyway because I am the old guy at the club. <laughs> like I'm the old guy. Like I've accepted that. Like I'm the old dude. And it's like I'm not shitting on these young rappers. Like whatever, man. Like they got a market for it. That's right. cool. But – um. It just wasn't my taste in that last, his last project, it was, I wasn't really fucking with it. He he got money out of me, but I wasn't fucking with it. Yeah. Uh, so let's talk about 444. Can you tell me what the fuck that number means? Uh, there was a story that he woke up at 444 in the morning, was inspired, started putting music together. That's one story that's on there. Four is a significant number in Jay-Z's life. His birthday is December fourth. Okay, you know, for example, I, you know, I, I think there's probably multiple le levels you can look at this. I think about he just had twins and he's got blue, so there's one foe and then there's two foes, forty foe. Right. I don't know. I added that. That's right. just what I see when I see. How it. does that work? Well, there's one four. Oh, like each child represents a four. Yeah, and then two of them oh. came out at the same time, and they're split by the, you know, the were they born on the fourth? No, no. no. Okay, well, but look. he was. You know, they all came from. You know, what I'm saying inside hope. All right, so nobody really knows. There, the or one story like, that we saw was that he woke up at 444 and was inspired. Or could, could it be like 16 minutes from 5? Like, oh, shit. <laughs> right. Like, it could be 165. Like, oh. 
I'm waiting for him to do like a you know a deeper dive into it, and maybe maybe that'll come out and, and be a, a little bit clearer. But as we know, that's what that's what the story is. He woke up at that time, was inspired for 44. All right, so y'all don't know what I thought of it. We want to know what you think, Jude. I dug it. I really liked it. Yeah, I really liked it. Um, I really look my favorite. The favorite. My favorite thing that's come out personally for me the last year or two is Royce the Five Nines layers. Okay, I still don't like this more than layers. Okay. I just I, Royce snaps and to me layers is my favorite, uh, but this Jay Z shit, the beats are fucking dumb as hell. The beat, just the production is, it's that's what separates Jay Z from a lot of these cats. His ear is fucking ridiculous. Right. He brought it. He brought in Just Blaze. He fucking you know, he he. The classic album was all Just Blaze and goddamn Kanye West. You right. know what I mean? And Eminem. Eminem had a beat on that. Oh, yeah. Uh, Renegade, right? right. Yeah, yeah um, Renegade beat. And then... Timbaland, I think, had one, but it was pretty much... Well, that's He's got a track record of working with fucking ill producers. Right. And, and producers that are... That that are using a classic sound in a contemporary way. He keeps he keeps finding that producer, and I felt like he did that again on this. I don't even know who did the production. No but ID. It, no ID did the production. Is that Chicago's own? Yeah, that's Kanye West mentor. That's fucking awesome. Right. That, I love to hear that. Um, and it felt like it. It felt it felt the beats felt new, but they had they had they were they were rooted. Right. They were they they were rooted in like some real hip hop shit, and I really fuck with that. I had to. I listened. I only got a chance to listen to it twice, and it's this this album lyrically is rich as fuck. Like I was like, oh, I missed that one. I missed that line the first time. I missed that line the first time. It kind of remind me of, um, like uh, listening to One Love by Nas and be like, oh damn, there's layers to this shit. He said he he like you'd have to listen to it three or four times to really catch everything that he's saying in there, and with Jay Z, um. It's the same way. He was talking about like jewelers should be ashamed of themselves, slinging <laughs> right. blood diamonds. Like just a real quick. It seemed like a throwaway, but like, like that's some heavy shit. It's like he's talking about like motherfuckers. Like we're rocking oppression on our fucking chest. Right. Like we're claiming oppression, yet rocking the fucking blood of somebody else on our chest as a status symbol. He didn't say all that, but he did say all that in one fucking line, and that's not even what the whole song was about. Right. And there's tons of fucking, there's there's tons of of lyrics and lines in in in, in on the project that that relate to that. And, and my favorite, some of my favorite uh, my favorite songs off of there, I really I really dug Moonlight, where he's kind of talking about like the new school of rappers right. because he's basically fucking. I'm echo. We echo each other. I'm like, yeah, I fucking, I agree with you on a lot of this shit. It's got the Fuji Law sample in the background on that one. I didn't recognize. Yeah, yeah, did it? that's the Fuji Law sample, man. Let me see. Let me pull that shit up. Stop walking around like y'all made Thriller, huh? I really want to tell the Black Beatles that shit. Like, chill the fuck out, dude. You're not the Black Beatles. That's funny. Fucking, you're not even close to the Beatles. Like, get get it, get their name out your fucking mouth. Like, they yo. did make the whole world freeze. You gotta give them that one. They had everybody frozen on the gram. Oh yeah, it's great. Fucking yeah, yeah, yeah. Dread yeah. sense. Yeah, it's fucking diseases got me fucking pouring uh, ice buckets on my head. It doesn't mean <laughs> it's like the best shit ever. It just means that like we're in a different time. Exactly. They're just yo, dude. Like, come on. They're like that's what I'm saying. These cats aren't cutting edge the way fucking Mike or or classic people are. And when they are, like they get they get their accolades a lot of times. Sometimes people get over accolades, uh, as I feel. Right. But. Yeah, I really dug that shit. I love that moonlight, and then it's working on two levels. He's doing the la la. It's a reference to La La Land. The, the song is called Moonlight. That's what actually won. Even when we winning, we still losing. We still losing. Like it was. It's hitting on so many different levels, and I'm like, yo, dude, I really like that. It's smart. It's fucking. He's getting his point across, and he's he's actually speaking on shit without sounding like a fucking not sounding hateful or no right. shit. Um, he's a big proponent of black business. I dig that. And and the thing with Jay Z is it's kind of like he's a black businessman, so like it is. Of course, yeah, yeah, like yeah, buy my shit, like right. yeah, you should support black business, aka buy my shit. But aka, guess what? Support fucking your own, dude. The line at the end of uh, uh, Family Feud when he talks about you know why would I buy anything else when Puff has Ciroc? Yeah, why you would know? I buy Belvedere when Pl Puff has Ciroc? Right. It's like yes. Right. Like support your fucking own. I can't agree. Like they're 
there's power in supporting one another. And if you look at if you look at communities that do well, they get money from other places and then they circulate it within themselves. That's like, it. They, they are they're insular in us. They're insular with with their money and they're kind of open in other ways. Right. I look around. Yeah, like. LA's got a LA's got that all over. Armenians, Jews, uh, the Persians, like these cats. Little they, town. Yeah, bro, they fucking they get bread and then they're. Guess what, doctor? Guess what, doctor? I go to Armenian doctor. It's all Armenians in that bitch. You dig? I'm the only white motherfucker. They give me tea like and bread the, in that bitch. You know what I mean? Like Armenians are like the black people of white people. They're like the black white people. Yeah, I don't even know if they're. I, are they technically Caucasian? I don't know I don't what the know. fuck I they just, are. I feel like they're on the line. Yeah, bro. I mean, I it's like I, I feel like they're near the Middle East. They some hummus eating motherfuckers. I don't know. <laughs> right. I, don't, I don't. I don't know what they are technically, but like. But they, you're right. I mean, they don't com- grub like Caucasians. Community is a big part of this project, right? You know, like you you have things like the story of OJ, which do focus on black business. You have things like you know, um, you know, supporting each other, Family Feud, for example. Even when we win, we're gonna lose. I, I feel like that's at the core of this project is a, a sense of of unity from arguably one of the most capitalistic artists we've we've seen in the last twenty years. Yeah. That what stood out to me. And that was the kind of the weird thing. It was like I don't know if this is Jay Z has a track record of being business first. He comes on like yo, dude. He even he addresses it, Sell, selling dope to your own fucking people, shooting your brother. Uh, there was that thing with Kanye going with him, even when Dame Dash discovered him. Uh, it, it, when he got in the fucking rap battle with Nas, like somehow he fucking gets Nas and then like kind of like doesn't do his project that well. Like the dude is diabolical. So when I listen to these, when I listen to these uh, statements, I agree with him. But then I'm like, are these self-serving? But even if they are self-serving, they're still, I think ultimately the right they're they're the right thing and if you take a step back and really look at how he's done this shit like he's doing it right that's one place where he does or he he still receives a lot of criticism around this project from certain communities there are people who view this as extremely hypocritical giving everything we've known about hope for a long time everything you just pointed out a broken clock can still be right twice a day i've got some quotes from gandhi i like I hear Gandhi wasn't all that great to everybody all the time. I heard Gandhi was cool with Hitler. You know what I mean? That's what I be hearing. But he says some stuff that still rocks. This is one of the most tweetable albums of the year. Like, there's one line that's all over the place. You can start a t-shirt collection just off of the the bars off of this project. But at the core of what he's talking about, to me, it's a positive conversation to have, regardless of how you feel about the the person delivering the message. I think sometimes that gets lost. Yeah. Yeah. And, I, and, and, and that's one of the things that I think a lot of people have been waiting to hear from Hove. They've been waiting to hear this type of perspective from Hove. Because it means something when someone who's sitting at the top of the pylon is willing to explain how things work, at least in a different kind of way. And look, man, I was like, I addressed this earlier on the show. I was a little fucking bitter that Jay-Z's people or Jay-Z flagged my fucking shit on Instagram when I'm co-signing what the fuck he's saying. Like, and that's kind of the point. Like, yeah, there's a message, but you got to pay the ten dollars for that message. Right. Just don't let don't let Jude fucking spread your message. Uh, po- post the story of OJ. Right. And not have that shit get flagged because my shit got flagged the fuck up. It's crazy. And it was it was the lines about building fucking credit and like becoming financial financially stable and not buying bullshit. Like, I feel like I agree with that. And coming from and this is something that this is something that transcends race. It's class, and a lot of times, um, people that grow grow up without money don't understand how money works, and how to keep money, and how to have money work for you. Um, we know, and I'm I'm from this place, and I still fall into this. Like every time you've been on, the, every time I've had a different pair of Cartiers on, every fucking time, because. I'm a fucking idiot. You know what I mean? Like, I need to show a, I, I need to rock a status symbol. Like, right. oh, you need to see this. If it's not going to be your shoes, got to be your Cartier's. You got damn right. Or, oh, a fancy watch. Or I'm trying to signal that I'm doing okay for right. myself. I got a pair of Tom Ford sunglasses. That, w- look, we all fall into this trap, but it's, what's important is that we, have, that we have a plan to have our money working for us, too, right. that we're putting money aside. And so, like, you just, 
it's not sexy to rap about. It's kind of boring. It's it's sweet as hell to look on a fucking on a Snapchat and see rappers throwing fucking tons of money all over the place. But really, what what are you doing with that money? Like, what, what is that money working for you, or is it just taking a, or, or did you just make it and it's just sitting over here? You finna get taxed on it? That was a big point of tension around this project. There was a lot of artists that took offense to the throwing money. To the jab at throwing money. What's better than throwing money in the strip club? Credit. It's the fucking truth. Try it to, is. yo, dude. I, I remember I, I tried to rent a fucking, I tried to rent an apartment out here without credit because I was cash and carry. If you don't got the money for it, you don't, you don't get it. Yeah. And I'm like a 30 year old with no goddamn credit, making good money here, trying to, trying to rent an apartment, and I couldn't rent a fucking apartment. I could have came in and. Th- Throw money in my fuck in the in the in the uh, sun sun juice face. I was her neck in sun juice face. Like here, look at this motherfucking got motherfucking rent. You know she, she would have been fuck out of here, dude. I had to go build credit. Like you do, you gotta be, you gotta figure out what the system is, become right. a part of the system, work within the system, but don't sell your soul to the fucking system. One of the lines that's been stuck in my head all week has been a man who don't a man don't take care of his family can't be rich. Was that from the Godfather? He said he watched The Godfather. He missed that whole shit. That is from The Godfather, but that's such a it's such a real line. I mean, that's like you know you have if you if you have problems at your house, if you have problems with your wife, if you're not taking care of your kids, it's, you're not even building uh, the future in a positive way. You're not there for it. If you got people on your team and you lean on them every day and you don't help them succeed, if you don't help invest in their goals or their dreams or at least pay them for their services, that's a problem. You see that all the time in entertainment. You have like, you get these inter- you get these internships a lot of times uh, that just go on forever and <laughs> they go on for years yeah. and then nobody really gets paid and then later maybe somebody blows up and then maybe they happen to work together but a lot of times they don't. Like it's something that I think is is paramount in your family, but also in business. A man don't take care of his family can't be rich. Yeah, you got you got to look out for each other. Yeah, you do. It's the real thing. Eight eight seven four two three three four five. What y'all think of it? Um, if you uh, got to put this on a, if you have to rate this scale to one to five, what do you rate it? Like four. You're the four strong four. Yeah, like I really liked. Uh, I'm going through. Like I like kill. It's funny. Like you know the cheating song. I was just like yeah. Like that's the thing about Jay Z. He's like he's got this track record of being kind of uh you know heartless in certain deals that when he's like here I am opening up I'm like are you opening up or are you just selling me a fucking are you just selling me a ticket that's the other piece of criticism that keeps coming out it's like is it convenient to be woke now is it Jay-Z showing up now with a woke message because we've had so many incidences of injustice that are consistently filmed on our cell phones? Oh, here comes Hove with some message that Fonte's been delivering since Charity Starts at Home, that Common probably hung out, you know, touched on on B, or one day it all makes sense. And now everyone is so excited to hear these messages from Jay-Z when, honestly, you know, they were telling everybody to watch the throne the year everyone lost their homes during the Great Recession. Is it trendy to be woke? And did, is Jay, in a way, riding the wave? I'm going to say well, one thing. I don't I, I don't hear many opposite opinions, so I don't even know if they're that woke. It seems like everybody's saying the same fucking thing. There's no real discussion. It's just like, this is the party line, this is the party line, this is the party line. And if anybody fucking speaks out against it, then they get called a sellout and this, that, and the third. So are you woke? Or are you just regurgitating fucking the common, the the popular line for rappers, for woke rappers? Mm. Um, and look, he, Jay-Z even said himself, look, I, I always wanted to rhyme like common sense. I made something million dollars. I ain't rhyme like common sense. Like, he's addressed this. Right. Um, but still, and now it's like, I, I look at it like, look, I don't know where you, where else you have to go. If you've owned sports teams, you got more number one records than anybody else. You've had record labels. You made people change clothes. Like, what else is there left for you to do than go inward? Well, also, like, look, dog, like, everything he's done, if you just study what the fuck he's done, he's been giving you game this whole goddamn time. Like, he owns his own shit. Like, or he... You know, he's talking, like, Rock Nation, all that, like, manager, like, trying to do management shit, like... He's basically studied what these people running shit do and was like, guess what? I'm going to do that, too. Why are we making Chris Style rich? I'm going to do that shit, too. Like, I don't know what's more woke than that. 
I don't know what's more woke than getting fucking. Then look, because there is no fairness in this world. Whoever's got power decides what's fair. That's whoever whoever has whoever's holding all the whoever's holding all of the fruit gets to tell you how much fruit you get, and then oh okay that's fair. Like and he's showing you how to go get it. Like he's showing cats how to go get it step by step by step by step. I can't fault him for that. I'm just saying emotionally, I question some of that shit because it's like. Yeah, do you mean that? But or you, you're launching this fucking thing. Even with the Beyonce, like your your girl is beyond an artist. She is now a product. You know, like the fact that they both had these these projects about fucking cheating. Uh, you know, like that's that's dope. It's gonna help some people get through there. But is it? Uh, you know, like I don't know how. I don't know how. It doesn't touch my heart that much. You can't let cynicism sink you. You know, like sometimes not you yeah, directly, yeah, yeah. but like, you know, a lot of times people sit there and look at all these things that are surrounding this thinking this is all a for show, all the world's a stage. Maybe it doesn't take away from the fact that the things he's saying are correct. Like sometimes people are just saying incorrect stuff, you know, like or stuff that doesn't make sense. This is actually correct. You know, like it's uh, it's 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 inspirational more than aspirational. Like I usually listen to Jay-Z and I feel like. Uh, if I don't have a $2 million painting, I must be stunting wrong. I don't feel like that this time. I don't feel, like, especially his last three projects, you know. But this one actually feels, I feel like a person telling me some cool things about life. Yeah, it's like I get to hear, look, yo, he's still bragging. Like, but I get to hear a bragging rapper. He talks about emotions. Tell me how to fucking make money and stack chips and stick together and all that shit. And I, I, I like that. But, yeah, I love it. But even on the art tip, like, we don't have emotion from Hove. Hope has always been iceberg slim, too cool for school. I think he's given as much emotion as, as he's capable of, too. Like, oh, especially on this project, I don't think there's anything. Do I think he's a? Do I think he's has the emotional depth of other rappers? Uh, no, but I think he is given as much emotion as he is possibly capable of. Right. right. Uh, let's play. Let's play. Uh, let's play the Bam song or Bomb. I like that. Uh, Damian, Damian Marley, right here on that shit. 888-742-3345 Talking Jay-Z 888-742-3345 888-742-3345 uh, Let's go to phone lines Holler some cats See how they felt about the album Then we're gonna We're gonna get some naysayers We got some people that Some rappers and shit like that That came out Not fucking with this album 888-742-3345 Look, Damn we even got people Calling on the warm line We got uh, Boy Ma in Minneapolis Boy Ma what up Hey, Puyaka Shine, Rude Jude, man, what the bomb bomb? What the bomb, your blood clot, pussy clot, hey, boom clot. Blood clot, pussy clot, man, <laughs> heart attack, all that, man. Hey, Rude, man. What up, I though? I just want to say, Jay is damn if he do, Jay is damn if he don't, because if he talk about what he got, people are like, oh, you're bragging. If he does it, people are like, oh, the Illuminati told him not to. Now he got $200 tickets. Jay Z never said go buy the $200 tickets. He just released a ticket. If you want to be sitting up at VIP, you can. You can be sitting all the way in the back. The man got big lips. You can see his lips moving from all the way in another state. So, hey, damn if you do, damn if you don't. <laughs> uh, the, uh, the, the tickets are going, what, between two and 400 bucks or some shit like that for to go see? Yeah, but he, he ain't saying go see him. He just said, these are my tickets, and if you can afford to go, go. If you want to stash your cash, maybe even sell some stuff, you know, get your prayer together and invest a little bit in Jay-Z. Maybe go sell some bootleg T-shirts at the show. Look, man, I think the I think the price point on sneakers have have that that motherfuckers continue to buy when they don't need them. It, it kind of oh, justifies yeah. the price of these tickets, you know what I mean? Like, yo, dude, of you're, course. Like, I, here's the here's the thing with me, man. I think, and this is my this is probably a whole nother conversation, but I feel like rappers have cheapened the product of a live show. And I'm gonna say like, and I'm gonna I'm gonna put it to you like this, and this is why: you go see a jazz performer, you go see an R and B singer, you go see a motherfucking uh, a rock and roll dude. They're not singing along to their CD. And no, that's too many karaoke. times, too many times, too many fucking times on rap shows, this has become acceptable. And it's it's not always like when my man got knocked out, when, when my man got my man ran up on the light skinned dude, knocked his ass out. The song kept going. He was asleep, and right. his shit kept going. Right. And no one even discussed right. that because that's become acceptable in rap music. 
Cats need to get yeah, away like, from that, bro. I'm just saying it's yeah, cheapening when you go to con- it. When you, go to, when you go to concert, all they do is like walk around on stage and point the uh, microphone to the audience. <laughs> No blood, no sweat. No Y'all sound like Steve this Harvey. Collect the money and be out. This sounds like a Steve Harvey you know? bit. Is it a Steve Harvey? It feels bit? like it from Kings of Comedy. I feel like I'm listening to Kings of Comedy right now. Well, I I don't know. I you know like I respect to Steve Harvey, but like I just fuck it, yo, dude. I'm not paying to watch you fucking rap to your goddamn CD, dude. I don't think that's a problem with like established superstar rappers, though. Like, I don't think you go to a Rick Ross show and you hear Jay, Rick Ross do that. Jay Jay Z's not going to do that. Look, yeah. Jay Z's Jay not barely do that. raps. Like, I'm not, and Jay Jay everyone knows Jay's rhymes. James Jay pretty much holds the microphone to the audience probably forty percent of the show. Last two Jay Z shows I went to. Was that fun for you? Yeah, it's right. Jay Z. It's like going. To, I love these songs. Like the Jay Z sing along. Right. That's that, what look, it is. That's cool too, man. But like. Yo, dude. Ah, uh, that's he's not lip syncing. That's, that's I'm totally not saying Jay Z is lip syncing, but I am. I saying, think a lot. Of, I think that's a good note for young artists. I think young that, rappers. Young rappers. That's that. Look, it's more common in rap music because we have Mariah Carey at uh, New York Times uh, Times Square lip syncing like crazy. And guess what happened? She ain't rapper. She got murdered she got for that. Deservedly so. It they, rappers don't deservedly get murdered is my fucking point. I think if you had someone in Mariah Carey, if Jay Z gets up there and starts lip syncing, you're gonna hear about it. You're definitely gonna hear about that. We're going not, you're not gonna get a pass for that. Millie Vanilli, they weren't rapping. They had a whole career where they didn't sing at all. I'm I can't even I can't <laughs> with you, man. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I just feel like you're like, fuck you, Jude. Just to be like, fuck you to me, man. Let's go to Terrence in Jacksonville. Terrence. Yes, how you doing? What up, man? Yeah, I'm, I'm just calling in to say, man, if you trace Jay-Z's catalog from the very beginning, he has always been dropping jewels for the level of the game that he's been on. When I was in the street hustling and listening, listening to the, the evil, I understood fully what he was talking about. Now that I'm a grown-ass 48-year-old man, on this album, I understand fully what he's talking about. So it's relatable to your age and, 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 and what you have going on in life. And if more rappers follow that script, if they rap according to their life and grew with their life, we, the music would be a whole lot better. I agree. Look, I think he's spot on. Like, Jay-Z, no one's ever accused Jay-Z of being dumb. You know what I mean? Right. Like, he's a smart motherfucker. He's... He's a bright guy. He's a businessman. He's 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 one of the top rappers ever. You know, so like no one's ever accused him of that. And right. to, to your point, yeah, he gets on there and fucking you know, friend or foe, all that, all the he's got jewels all throughout these fucking things. Uh, but it's, it is cool that he's like he's crossed over now. He's like telling cats how to really like, hey man, like fucking buy property and shit like that i think i'm less impressed with like the business tips i feel like that's what kingdom come the first half of that album was i didn't listen to kingdom come Kingdom Come that much. i don't know if it's underrated i think it's probably appropriately rated the first half is great the second half you can go ahead and, and flush that one but i think that like the fact that he's a person now like this is a dirty j album the production is like classic hip-hop it doesn't even it sounds like you could have done this in pro tools in your bedroom like you know like and it but yeah. it sounds like that on purpose and i love it but i not, love it not in a bad way <laughs> not in a bad way like on purpose like I, jay is one of the cleanest cats in the history of rap i don't have a history of jay-z not seeming shiny this dude is bearing his soul and emotionally at the same time over some classic quintessential rap at 47 that to me is more impressive than you know, hey, well, if you buy a house I, this I year, this show, it'll go up. And, and, and I really hope that, that some of these younger rappers will follow suit. And as they age, let their rhymes progress. You and, know? And look, you don't have nonsense when you're 19 and 20. And yeah, as you should. You should be doing dumb shit when you're 19 and 20. Right. Like, that's cool. Right. Um, but don't forget, Pac was 26 when, when he left. Or, like, he was in his mid-20s. 25. 25, yeah. Damn. Like, and he was dropping some fucking gems on cats. Right. Um, and look, to the point, like, this is why both you and I dig this album. I give it four out of five. I'm looking at the track list. There's, like, a seven, seven, six and a half out of out of the ten tracks that I actually fuck with. You right. know, like, really fuck with tough. And the other ones, they're cool. Um, but the fact that you and I each can, you, you like his emotional depth. I like him fucking trying to help people rise up. Right. Um, and that's cool. That's multiple layers, man. Layers. There's layers to this. Speaking of which, layers by Royce of Five Nine <laughs> is fucking awesome. Y'all should check that shit out. That if you is, ever heard it, punch yourself in the face. Um, uh, 
this is this wasn't touched on and I thought this was interesting. My musical friend was listening to it and he said the mix on this shit is almost like a mono mix where everything's jumbled kind of in the there's no there's not a lot of left and right speaker. And he 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 brought this up. This was this wasn't me, but I thought it was interesting. Um that this is for the phone, bro. People people are people experience their shit, you know, they're listening to they're listening to shit on the phone. So it's it it's almost was built for the phone speaker, so it would sound decent on a fucking phone speaker as well as on headphones. And I thought that was an interesting take on on the mix of that album. What was what, what? What are your thoughts on that? I mean, it, it may make sense. Uh, you know, I think it's I think you can still have it balanced from left to right. You know, Kanye's always good at that, and it sounds good in your headphones. You know, if you're on the treadmill or something, uh, it's not something that particularly bothered me or something I was. Uh, excited about i'll tell you this i didn't notice that i definitely didn't notice that there wasn't a lot of left and right speaker on the track i'll have to listen to it on the yeah, album check it's, it a good, out. it's a good thing to point he out he might be wrong and then i'm gonna cuss him out for making me look like an asshole on well, here but like no, but, you, but either way like you know that's part of this package right like this is again this is like a dirty production like on purpose in a good way in an artistic way so